Thank you, everyone, for participating in our first two in-person sessions. We had the opportunity to listen to our founders and partners, Martin Essel of the Essel Foundation, Catalina Saé of Fundación Descubreme, and José Luis Donoso of Fundación Once, with their visions for this conference. We were also able to learn from Jesús Hernández de Fundación Once on the advances that have been made and the lessons that we've learned in terms of accessibility, as well as some of the challenges that we still have to overcome in order to build a society that is inclusive and accessible for all, and in particular for people with disabilities. Then we had the opportunity to speak with two international experts, Ana Palaez, the High Commissioner for Solidarity and International Cooperation at Grupo Social ONCE, and Vice President of the European Disability Forum, as well as Immaculada Placencia Porero, a senior expert in disability and inclusion at the Directorate General for Employment, Social Affairs and Inclusion at the European Commission. We also had moderator Michael Fembe, the director of Zero Project. They shared their vision of the challenges of understanding accessibility as being a human right of people with disabilities and how technologies can be used as a tool to facilitate the autonomy of people with disabilities. Without a doubt, accessibility is a cross-cutting issue in all aspects of life, and we want to continue to show you more initiatives that will contribute to its full accomplishment. As I said at the start, the conference will take place in a hybrid format. There will be a mix of in-person, remote, and pre-recorded sessions. To continue with the program, I will now leave you with Andres Berogi, and Maria Ignacia Rodriguez from Fundación Descubreme, who will accompany you throughout the day with a specially prepared program of events. Thank you, Carola. I'm so happy to be part of the Zero Project Conference 2022 for Latin America and the Spanish speaking community. I am Andres Berogi. I am the head of management and diversity of Fundación Descubreme. I am a tall, a white man, tall, wearing glasses with about 50 years old with not much hair. Thank you, Carola. I'm also very proud of being part of this conference and working for this relevant mission as the construction of this world without barriers for uh, people with disabilities. As you said, I am Maria Ignacia Rodriguez. I, Rodriguez, I am a white woman of average height. Uh, dark hair, and I also wear glasses. In Fundación Descubrime, I work as the head of the coordination, international coordination, and also the Zero Project coordination. E here we have a great, our great mission of expanding this world without barriers towards the Spanish-speaking world and towards our region. We know that in our region there are a lot of efforts to promote inclusion, but many times these initiatives are not connected, are, do not communicate, and they do not create any kind of synergy due to the lack of knowledge and networks among them. We need to strengthen these links and create this community sense. We believe that the collaborative work will help us create a world without barriers. I want to thank our sponsors for their com constant commitment to create this more accessible and inclusive world. This third version of our conference is done in a hybrid format. It means that we will have some live moments, some recorded moments in a virtual environment. In order to continue participating in the rest of our program, I would like to tell you about how our web platform works. We have a um, broadcasting channel with two available languages, English and Spanish, in order to expand this content to those who are interested in it. Also, we have international sign languages for all the sessions and also subtitles in Spanish. We we also transmit um, the conference in a continuous way in YouTube. You can also check a detailed agenda in the main web page of the platform, which is latinamerica.zeroproject.org. Uh, One of the features of the platform is that it allows you to schedule in your calendar the sessions that you may be interested in. But if you cannot see 
the sessions at the moment of the broadcasting. Do not worry about that because you will be able to see them at the end of the day. They will be available in the platform during the next two weeks along with the material to download for each session. You will also have the possibility to have contact with those who are connected in the platform through the networking button through which you can create meetings among participants. In order to continue with our program today, we will present this session called Tourism Without Barriers. Due to the sanitary situation of the last two years, tourism has, is an industry that has been affected. And it's very important to highlight and to in guarantee the inclusion of people with disabilities in order to recover the tourism industry. Leisure, recreation, and welfare are something very important for the development of a uh, good life. And from this perspective, we invite you to reflect on the role of accessible tourism and without barriers for the inclusion of people with disabilities. For this interesting conversation, we have the moderation of Jesus Hernandez, Director of Universal Accessibility and Innovation of Fundación Once and Vice President of the European Network for Accessible Tourism. Speak, as a speakers, we have Glenda Duran, who is the executive director of Fundación Eres, which is a Chilean organization of Unicycle, that is a device that allows people with disabilities to have access to areas, remote areas. With us is also Renat Ampilogo from Global for All, a Russian platform of information and booking without barriers designed for uh, tourists with disabilities. Andres Villagran from Will the World, a uh, social company, uh, um, Chilean company that offers accessible trips for people with disabilities, their families and friends. Bastian Palis from Latin American for All, an Equatorian uh, travel agency that offers uh, trips to these uh, certain destinations for wheelchair users. We invite you all to see this interesting session. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jesus Hernandez Galan. I'm the Director of Accessibility and Innovation at the Fundación Once in Spain. I'd like to welcome you to this panel today on Tourism Without Barriers, which is part of the Zero Project Conference in Latin America. And I'd like to begin with telling you a little bit what we do at the Once Foundation and the projects that we're developing in terms of providing tourism for all or tourism without barriers. Fundación Once was founded more than 30 years ago. It is developed by people with disabilities to improve the quality of life of those with disabilities in our society. It is one of the largest foundations, the largest foundations in the world working for and with people with disabilities. We have more than 117,000 people working within the entire country. And our resources come from the lottery and donations from different companies. Uh, and so we have a large number of resource to work with in Spain every year. And it's a very comprehensive, holistic outlook within our foundation. We began to work on eliminating architectural barriers in the 1990s. And we are now focused really on technology and how technology can improve the life of people with disabilities how accessible technology can be a real re powerful tool in improving the quality of life. And so we are looking at accessible technologies that can really make enormous changes in the context and reality of people with disabilities in terms of tourism. We have 
continue to expand our comprehensive and holistic vision of the projects that we can be involved with, that we look to develop uh, tourism destinations, improve the transport to these locations, and the accessibility of all uh, tourism destinations. We believe that this is really fundamental work because we look at tourism from the point of view of even a hotel or a destination. How can we improve and incorporate more accessibility features for people with disabilities? We have signed several agreements with different organizations and agencies, with different government organizations, both at the national and international level. One of the biggest milestones that we have been able to achieve in the past few years has been the development of an ISO standard on accessible tourism. This is something that we were able to achieve after a lot of joint work with the, uh, the International Association of Tourism. And we have looked to work with UNI, which is the standardization authority in Spain. And so we have performed several works with them in order to develop different agreements and collaborating and working together with different international organizations as well in order to work on tourism standards. With UUNI, we have been able to develop all of the types of uh, projects that should come from uh, the standardization organizations. And from the Fundación ONCE, we have also been able to uh, work on different initiatives that have expanded the scope of this ISO agreement, including a regulation that has been able to improve accessibility in different countries. It is, we've tried to develop a standard that can be applied to any tourism sector in any country, any destination, and be able to implement accessibility no matter the current level of accessibility in that, uh, that country. We have also been working from everything from countries with very high levels of uh, accessibility, such as Spain, Japan, Canada, the United States, where we've carried out different uh, collaborative works over the past few years, but we've also worked with countries that perhaps are not as developed in this area. The ISO standard has been applied from the moment that People, we want to have it implemented from the moment that someone decides that they want to travel and they begin their research, gathering information. We want all of that information to be accessible from the first moment that they decide they want to travel. Then we want to look at the destination, the infrastructure, the experiences that they can undergo. We want to bring together all of that information in an accessible format. And so in all of the areas that we've been able to implement this standard, uh, we've seen changes. For example, in terms of the transport that is available at different destinations so that people are able to move about the destination without any problems. We've looked to, we, we see this as a really fundamental element because I've had my own experience when I've traveled where I've been to a motel that said that it was accessible. And then when I got there, yes, the motel itself was accessible. But then when I tried to move about the city, I found myself coming up against impossible situations because they hadn't developed accessible transport, both in terms of public and private transport at the destination city. So this is really fundamental to incorporate accessible tourism at the level. And then, as we say, the ISO has also tried to establish what does that mean when a hotel or motel is accessible. We want it to be something that is standardized so that any tourist that arrives there can enjoy all of the accessibility features at any type of accommodation. We also want to establish what are the 
infrastructure standards for a restaurant, for example, so that it can provide the highest quality of service. We've realized that accessibility is a question of quality, uh, providing quality experiences for tourists at destinations. So we have also introduced a cross-cutting platform that uh, looks to uh, approach all of these aspects of tourism. So infrastructure is extremely important to the tourist experience. So this is an ISO standard that we have tried to develop that is very global, very holistic, looks at all of the requirements that someone may need. And so that we can make sure that every experience can be very satisfactory, very high quality for any tourist. This standard has already been published uh, by the IATA. And we hope that everyone who can take advantage of this ISA can become more interested in, into it and get onto the platform in order to be able to see the full regulation. So if you go to accessibility, it is written in Spanish. So A C E S S I B L E. We can write it into the chat so that you can then be taken to the more information on our ISO standard that we have been able to establish in Spain. Okay, so I think with that, I will conclude my own presentation. And we will be, that's a little bit about what we've been doing in terms of accessibility at uh, Fundacion Once. And I'd like to now present Andres Villegaran, who works with Wheel the World. It is an initiative that specializes in accessible tourism that carries out different daily excursions. It has a customer service that is focused on uh, accessible tourism. And so I think it's been a really important initiative. And I think not, he, he is really, uh, in his, ba his background, he is Chilean. He started with Wild World a couple of years ago, and he's been working with, uh, as a consultant for several large companies in terms of accessible, and then founded Wild the World in order to improve um, the accessibility via his own initiative. Good afternoon. Thank you, Jesus, for that introduction. I am Andres Villagran. I am part of the marketing team of Will the World. Will the World is a company whose purpose is to make the world accessible. We want everybody to enjoy, to be empowered, to travel around the world limitless. Everything started with a group of friends, Alvaro Silva, one of the founders of uh, Will the World, along with Camilo Lavarro, his friend since they were teenagers. They wanted to go to Torres del Paino. Uh, Alvaro had an accident and since he was, uh, when he was 18, he's quadriplegic. And for many years, he's lived with this disability. In 2016, in December of that year, they said, let's go to Torres del Paine. And everybody said, you guys are crazy. That's impossible. You're not going to be able to do that. That has never been done. And they continued with their dream. They decided to do it. They joined a group of friends, a group of, a group of photograph photographers and they created this documentary and the story became viral they bought this uh, chair to be or to do this w circuit in the towers or in the torres del paine and he is the first person who has ever done this circuit in the world and from that moment we realized that the world is not accessible 
and that this ability and accessibility are not considered as something as a priority in the tourism world. The accessibility information is not online. It's hard to find it. And the accessibility needs differ from person to person. Two people with the same disability may need something different. And there are no companies and there are no solutions that guarantee this accessibility information. That's why we decided to create the best solution in the world so people with disabilities, elderly people, and any person who may need this uh, accessibility, they can have access to willtheworld.com and they travel wherever they want to go. We offer inf reliable information, guaranteed information of accessibility. We give recommendations to the users according to their needs and the accessibility in the destinations. And also we understand about accessibility, we understand about disabilities, and we have a personalized service according to the needs of every person. How do we do this? We offer three types of products. We have the um, housing activities and tourist packages. We collect the accessibility information through our app that is called Accessibility Mapping System that along with mappers, people who are committed with accessibility all around the world, they travel everywhere, they go to different hotels, they have different experiences, and they collect this information where we have more than 500 points of accessibility. The information that we collect goes from the height of the bed, what type of shower, if there is any kind of ramp at the entrance of the hotel, and many other uh, um, um, or much more information so people can see this platform and they are empowered and they see what they are going to face. Many people reach their destinations. They choose in different platforms the experiences that they want to have, the accessible experience that they want. And when they are in the place, they see that it is not accessible. We want to make this information objective so every person is able to decide if that fits their needs or not. We also ask people to understand in a better way so they can build their own accessibility profile. We have more than 20 questions and that way we understand what the users need. We also have a, uh, we also see or match the accessibility of each destination and we recommend the places to the people. If you want to go to New York, you may choose this guided tour that has a 75% of compatibility with what you require. And also we have focused this in creating a community within the cooperation is very important for making this world accessible. That's, well, that's why all the opinions of users, of travelers are very important for us because our purpose, as I said before, is to make the world accessible. We want to reach all the places in the world and we know that when we hear, when we cooperate with people, when we listen to them, that's the way to reach this. We are 40 people. We are going to be more than 50 at the end of this month. People who are committed, who are passionate with accessibility, with lots of conviction, with lots of energy, with the desire to do the things in a different way. We believe, and I believe that the world in different fields is moving towards a direction that I don't like. And I think we, all of us, not only will the world, if we consider accessibility, as Jesus said, from the beginning, as Jesus said, from the beginning, we will make sure that we will enjoy this world just like the others. We are people who are in 13 countries. We speak more than five languages in our company, and we are full of energy. We want to provide the best solution for uh, people with disabilities. Our plan is to continue growing, to, to continue growing in the next 18 months. We want to position ourselves in the United States. We have more than 700 uh, products in more than six, 60 destinations. We, are, we want to have more than 100 destinations. And by 2023, we want to cover the Americas. We want to cover Europe, Asia, and reach in more than 150 destinations, offering multiple uh, products in experiences, in uh, hotels or um, 
housings and in tourist packages. So I want to invite you all. And I think this is a commitment from the society. We need to be committed around accessibility. We have to put a little bit of our energy and among all of us, we can make the world more accessible for all the people in this planet. Thank you so much. Andres, thank you very much and congratulations on your initiative. It's really spectacular. And I think it's a, such a necessary initiative. Now we're going to hear from Glenda Duran, who is going to talk about the Hiking Without Limits program in Chile, which seeks to eliminate barriers for people to disability to enjoying the outdoors. Glenda is a professor of biology and one of her passions is working on inclusion. She has a master's in educational policies, and she has been working on different initiatives in Latin America. She's founded, uh, a member and founder of Fundacion Eres, and she has always sought to broaden up offers of accessible spaces. One of her initiatives has won a prize for women leadership and she has worked with uh, another another prize for women leaders by the El Mercurio paper here in Chile. She's going to be speaking about her initiative. Good afternoon everyone. Thank you very much for this opportunity to speak about our initiative. And thank you very much, Jesus, and all of the panelists with us today. I'd like to talk a little bit about the work that we're doing as a foundation. Tourism provides incredible experiences for everyone. And it's also an opportunity to be able to implement best practices that can be culturally transformative and that can have a social impact. They bridge gaps and they can improve the quality of life for people with disabilities and their families. This perspective of tourism forces us to see that reality and identify all of those barriers, no matter how subtle they are. And so we seek to break down those barriers in order to transform society into a space for all. That is our mission. And we would like to invite you to learn a bit about how we develop those proposals. Fundacion Eres is a nonprofit organization that advocates for the rights of people with disabilities and their families. And we specifically think about uh, social and cultural transformations so that we can open up and offer up more inclusive spaces for all. Hiking Without Limits is an accessible program that provides outdoor activities for all people, people with disabilities, on in equal footing as well as for people with reduced mobility and their families. We're going to show you a little bit about what we do. It is an experience, a tourism experience, for where we use um, adapted unicycles that are low cost. The fact that they're low cost is fundamental because it makes the whole experience more accessible for all. We carry out these excursions in parks that have little or uh, no offers for accessible options. However, it is a rapid solution and innovative that provides affordable outdoor accessibility options. We use our hiking unicycles and train a team to be able to implement our program. We also look to train hiking monitors or guides so they can replicate the experience in different areas. We provide all of these training opportunities so that people can become guides. And it also allows people with disabilities to use this as a way to integrate into a work environment. Our hiking chairs 
are operated by two or more people who are trained in that specific role. It offers a very comfortable experience for people to contemplate and appreciate nature. It can be a group experience among people with reduced mobility, their families, and with a wonderful team of volunteers and workers. Hiking Without Limits includes several different elements, including the assessment design and adaptation or improvement of different hiking trails in different localities. We can identify the best trails for us to carry out our experiences. We also provide support materials that we have developed. So, and we provide these materials that help us to highlight the different flora and fauna of different places that we visit, and also the cultural and geographical or climate access aspects of these trails. It is an activity where everyone is involved, not just people with disabilities, but everyone and their families as well so that we can really appreciate these natural spaces and enjoy all of these experiences where we can enjoy the environment and carry out self-care activities in the forest and in nature. Other aspects of these programs includes different training uh, opportunities that we've carried out with different organizations, uh, with, along with different initiatives that have decided to replicate our activities. We have been able to work with different tourism operations, as well as park rangers, volunteers, and young people with disabilities. We, you can see in the images one of the students that we've worked with, who works with our foundation. Juan Caro is one of the hiking monitors that also participates in our program. We have been able to carry out excursions in many regions of our country. We have been able to work with the National Forestry Administration, and we have also carried it out in different parks throughout the country. And we've been able to train people to be able to replicate the experience and be able to provide this tourism experience to anyone who is interested. We have been able to make sure that different landscapes throughout our country have been become accessible. We are committed to making sure that the smiles of our people are, have become a real reflection of their experience. We have a fantastic, a satisfactory rating from our users. We have been able to develop and, fab, uh, and manufacture more than 45 hiking chairs for use in eight different regions throughout the country. And we're increasing our numbers throughout the countries. We've been able to partner with different organizations and different parks. And in the days coming, we're going to be able to donate another one of our chairs. And we've also been working with different stakeholders to be able to develop and replicate our initiative throughout other countries on the continent so that more people can have full access to nature. Every experience and every excursion is based on our understanding of life that really values inclusion, based on the exercise of good practices, our impact that we can have on public policies and on cultural transformation. We seek to change our beliefs and expectations and bring a fair uh, experience of life and equal opportunities to all. We want to have a social, environmental, and economic impact so we can make sure not just this, uh, that our program isn't just sustain sustainable, but also work for the sustainability of our own planet and improve the quality of life and make sure that more and more people can enjoy this experience that we're sharing with you today. I'd like to leave you with our contact details. We would love to reach more areas with our initiative and work with more and more organizations so that we can make full inclusion a reality. I'd like to leave you now with a video that is going to give you a brief view of what our work is like. Thank you very much. 
And I hope to continue working with all of you for the full inclusion and quality of life of everyone. Thank you very much. Tell me, how did you enjoy it? It was fantastic. What was your favorite thing? Nature. I'm such a fan of nature. And today, I learned to fall in love with it even more. Hiking without limits. Contact with nature is essential for the quality of life of people. But people with disabilities find themselves facing several barriers when they want to go out into nature. In order to solve this problem, we have designed Hiking Without Limits, an inclusive experience that looks to connect people and improve their welfare. Hiking Without Limits offers several accessibility solutions from a multi-dimensional perspective. It includes several inclusive excursions with our hiking chair and other inclusive activities. It also includes several training services in nature excursions for work teams, volunteers, and beneficiaries of our programs. Hiking Without Limits works on creating alliances between different local community stakeholders. We believe that by working as a team is the only way that we we'll, will be able to create a more fair world that is more inclusive for everyone. Hiking Without Limits from Fundación Eres. Thank you very much, Galinda, for your presentation. We're now going to move to another part of the world. So now we are going to Kazakhstan and we'll hear from Renat Apilagov, who is going to share with us the work that he's carried out with Globe for All. He has been working for a world without barriers and he looks to adapt tours for people with uh, special needs. He is part of the Globe for All Association. It's been functioning more than 15 years. Sorry, he has more than 15 years of experience. He was working prior to his initiative in a music school teaching. And he felt that he wanted everyone to have equal opportunities to tour. And so he began this website, an interactive platform that is developed for people with disabilities. But Renat, you can tell us more about your initiative, please. Thank you, Jesus. Um, dear colleagues, it's a great pleasure for me to be here today. I do not have the logo. And for those who can see me, uh, I'm a tall man uh, with uh, blonde hair, uh, blue eyes, uh, there in a blue hoodie. Now I'm in Almaty and greetings from Kazakhstan. I'm a co-founder of Love Parole. And I'm glad to present you the project dedicated to accessible tourism. First of all, meet one of our travelers. This fantastic young lady in a wheelchair is Natasha, who dreams of adventures. But after injury, she became a wheelchair user and she thought it's impossible. Last summer, she booked a tour to Kamchatka a Far East Peninsula, and she got mountains, volcanoes in the Pacific Ocean. She was happy, uh, and she said that Globe for All is scaling happiness. This is what we do. Globe for All makes travel simple for people with disabilities. Globe for All is the online booking platform connecting travelers with disabilities and trusted service providers. One part of the platform um, is accessibility news uh, and travel stories, life hacks and interviews to inform and inspire. So the travelers can find out where to go and what to do. 
than book accessible tours, hotels, and adventures adapted for their needs. They can go on vacation and think not about accessibility, but about new experience. Our partners help to make it possible. Our partners are travel and transport companies, hotels, museums, volunteers, and city guides. We inspire them to open a new niche market in accessible tourism, create new products, increase sales, and make a social impact, impact through accessible services. Globe for All is an inclusive community based on uh, nothing for us without us. So part of our guides are people with disabilities, all the family members and NGOs of disabled people. One of our guides, uh, you see him uh, in the center of a photo. Um, his name is Eugene and he uh, drives a wheelchair with his chin. Before the injury, uh, he was a snowboarder and a lifeguard. But even now he loves uh, mountains, snow adventures, skiing and snowboarding. And he is happy to share his passion and knowledge with common guests. Our goal is to provide a person not just them um, adapted travel products, but the freedom of choice uh, based on, uh, on the dreams and interests. So Globe Pro, uh, so on Globe Pro, everyone could uh, find a variety uh, of accessible adventures um, from Atlantic to Pacific Ocean. We believe that disability uh, shouldn't uh, limit the possibilities. So we invite people with disabilities to become guides. If necessary, uh, undergo training and work with us on the development of accessible tourism. For this, the second product was launched. An online education platform. This is a place the people with disabilities, travel professionals, can find training courses, masterclasses, and best practices in the field of accessible tourism. They can learn and get new skills and experiences. Those people with disabilities discover new areas of professional development and deployment in tourism. And travel professionals learn how to make tourism accessible for guests with special needs. You know, last years uh, were not easy for, for tourism. Even in 2020, uh, we found new partners, helped hundreds of tourists tested new routes and got international awards. We have about 25,000 subscribers, uh, more than 120 uh, partners from different countries in the world. Uh, but the most important, we give 24,000 hours of happiness to our travelers. The belief that by 2025, uh, more than 10,000 people with disabilities will uh, travel the globe pro, and more than 1,000 uh, of them will become guides. This is our vision. We tested Globe Parole in COVID times. Now we want uh, to open new regions for accessible tourism. We are looking for new partnerships and new products. Uh, and uh, of course, we are looking for new tourists for new destinations. Just a few words about our team, why it's so important for us. Globe for All is an inclusive and international team of like-minded people. 
half of our team uh, members have disability. They work as a journalist, developers, product managers, and accessibility experts. I'm an R&D manager with over 10 years of experience, but my first job was a college for blind musicians. I was a teacher there. So I know how important inclusion and accessibility are. They believe that tourism is a force for good. We strongly believe in tourism and travel, interactions between people and countries uh, as a force of goodness and freedom. No one is immune from loss of mobility and independence. Join us in creating the world accessible for all. Thank you for the opportunity. Renat, thank you so much. It's so interesting, the project that you've got going. And now we're going to go to Ecuador to hear from Bastien Paris, who is from Latin America for All, who is going to tell us a bit about her project and experience managing this project, Latin America for All, where they began with trips through Ecuador and then through other countries in Latin America for people who use wheelchairs. She is, has worked with the Technical University of Munich, and she has also worked on different value chains, working to provide different accessible options. Bastien is also an entrepreneur who is the founder of the Amazon Lodge, a fully accessible lodge in the Amazon. She also manages Latin America for all. Please, Bastian, go ahead with your presentation whenever you are ready. Thank you very much, Jesus, for the introduction. It's a pleasure to be here today with all of you to be able to tell you a little bit about our own experience as a tourism operator, an accessible tourism operator, principally in Ecuador, but also since 2009, we've been operating in other countries throughout the region. We were recognized by Zero Project in 2018, and we're thrilled to be here today once again, sharing our experience and expanding to other uh, organizations throughout the region. Latin America for All is a tourism operator that looks to focus on accessible tourism. And it focuses also on sustainable tours that consider accessibility to be a cross-country pillar of our mission. We work in Ecuador, Peru, and Argentina through our strategic partners. We've been functioning since 2009, and we focus on small groups, and we want to have a really in-depth knowledge of the destination and the requirements of each client so that we can provide really memorable experiences and so that we can make sure that they really become pleasurable tours for all that are adapted to their specific needs. And we put a really strong emphasis on the personalized experience. As Jesus said at the beginning of the session, having an accessible hotel room isn't enough. We need to make sure that all of the experiences and excursions are also accessible. So we have a really cross-country focus throughout uh, all of the tour. In terms of sustainability, that is another founding pillar of Latin America for All. We look to provide short, medium, and long-term accessible solutions. When we began in 2009, Ecuador wasn't an accessible destination. What we sought to do was to see how could we adapt each of those destinations to make them more accessible for people using wheelchairs, for example, so they could have a really quality experience. And that's where we sought to make our innovations. And we innovated in terms of even the wheelchairs that we provide, as you can see in the image here. 
we have, through these wheelchairs, been able to make much more of the country accessible to our tourists. Our guides are also key to the success. It's not just about their knowledge, it's about going beyond. They can adapt, uh, you know, to issues that might come up along the way. We might say they have to improvise, but it's not just that. It's the willingness of our guides to be able to go beyond, to make every destination as accessible as possible so that our guests can have the best possible experience. It's important to be able to share our success stories so that we can show these tourist providers who have been able to identify accessible solutions and the impact that they can have on their own businesses. A really good example that we've had is our work with Wasquila Amazon Lodge. I'm a co-founder of this lodge where we have had that good fortune of being able to build an accessible tourism destination from our very beginnings. And we've worked with people with and without disabilities to be able to have a really quality experience for all. And so using this type of wheelchair that you can see in the image, we have been able to take our guests even as far as waterfalls and destinations that they perhaps never dreamed of being able to reach. So we invite you to visit the webpage of Huesquila Amazon Lodge to see more of the possibilities there. What are some of the keys of our operation? Well, one of our philosophies is to do whatever is possible. We've seen just from the beginning of making a reservation, there's perhaps a lot of information available but it perhaps doesn't provide that information that you need. It isn't quite what you expect. In terms of that accessibility information, perhaps there isn't as much communicated on what you need. So we always say we need to do everything possible. That's why the role of the guide is so important so that they can be flexible and work towards the situation. For example, we also think of safety in Galapagos when we have done kayak tours for people with limited mobility. Well, if we've seen that it doesn't work to their needs, then we will cancel that and readapt the tour so that we can make sure that that guest can have a full experience of the destination. So we always have to keep in mind that this is a holiday. And so we want to make sure that we go beyond and allow the person that is visiting the destination can have as much enjoyment of it as possible. So we really respect that our guides are able to work with our clients in order to provide as much accessibility as possible. Another key to the operation is to provide continuous training for our personnel, for our guides. For example, after COVID, we've seen that it's been a bit more difficult to, because we didn't have that constant flow and, and exchanges. But this is key, and we need to be able to provide support uh, or to receive support to be able to continue to provide this continuous training to hotels, service personnel, guides so they continue to work and understand how to work with guests who are in wheelchairs, for example, and how they can be prepared and think about how they can receive these guests and the destinations in Latin America. Because as we know, they're not yet completely prepared or trained to be able to provide the high level of accessibility that we need so that these guests can move as freely as they would like. So we also want to work on awareness and sensitivity before the guests arrive at the destinations so that we can make sure that a quality service is provided. We want to have that mindset of we learn something new every day, that every client has different needs, whether they are, have or are with or without a disability, they always have different necessities. And so we always need to leverage those outside resources as well. 
because we're talking about a business that has an incredible level of detail. And so we need to make sure that we can leverage resources so that we can make sure that this is an end-to-end -end solution. Some of the lessons that we've learned along the way include the fact that sustainability always needs to be one of the most important things that is kept in mind in order to provide excellent services. We need to generate networks and contacts and keep in touch with people who have already undertaken these excursions so that we have all of that information at hand that we need. For example, we've done sort of a general levels of promotions, but we've seen that that information for people with disabilities, it needs to be more in depth. So we need to be able to have the full information for people with disabilities so that they can arrive at these destinations that are perhaps not as well known and make sure that the services are indeed adapted to their needs. We've also seen that tourism for people with physical disabilities is a very niche business. And for it to be sustainable for a tourism operator, it can be quite complex. So we want to continue to expand our market to be able to offer other types of tours, for example, yoga tours or tours for people who are blind or with visual impairments. Before the pandemic began, we had managed to carry out some excursions with different types of groups that would have broadened that market offering. And it allowed us to expand our offerings. Uh, but then with the pandemic, we, we need to go back and readdress that situation. As we've heard from my colleagues today, we've also said we it's really important to make sure that you carry out an in-depth analysis of the destinations because problems can always arise. And the important thing is, how do you react to them? How do you solve them? So the guide needs to be able to think beyond uh, what is just at hand. And so that's why we work on in all of our training as well. In that sense, we always think about going that extra mile. It's, it sets us apart. It's a real differentiator. And it's important that we train not just our own guides, but also the suppliers of services in our excursions. Bastian, thank you very much. It is so interesting to hear about your project. Thank you and congratulations. I want to thank all the speakers for the great projects that you have presented. Projects that are going to improve the quality of life and the experience of people with disability in tourism, especially in this um, outdoors tourism. This has been very interesting. And as I am a user of a wheelchair, I will be very interested in enjoying these projects that you have presented. Now we're going to start with a Q&A uh, session. We're going to start with Andres. Andres, do you think the Latin American countries and the Caribbean countries are ready to offer this uh, entertainment a space based on accessible tourism, core, considering all the needs. If not, how can we deep dive in this development? Thank you very much, Jesus, for the question. It's a very good question, in fact. I think there's a bit of an issue in the world. The fact is, the world isn't accessible. When I mean that it's not accessible in terms of infrastructure and in terms of needing that cultural shift. Well, there are more developed countries that have infrastructure available that's more developed, that's more accessible for people. For example, if we think of the United States or England, when for the Paralympic Games, they had an accessible venue, they're still facing many issues in terms of accessibility. So when we take it to Latin America, we're a little bit behind in the issue. And so I think, well, we're 
able to offer tourism that is accessible, we need to do a lot of work. I think what we're missing is a lot of that willingness to really include accessibility in our in our projects at We the World. What we're trying to do is raise awareness on accessibility and the importance of it, and then also to generate infrastructure. For example, last year, we donated several different devices to help people access the beach uh, using different ramps and walkways. So I think it's a responsibility for all of us, for the governments, private companies, organizations, all of us to facilitate access so that people with disability who want to access these experiences have that opportunity. I think there are barriers that need to be taken down still. We need to think about in terms of lodging, transport, excursions, activities. There are still lots of barriers that need to be overcome. But I think if we have that willingness to make a world that's more accessible, we can do it. And we certainly are trying to do so in more than 30 different destinations. Thank you so much, Andres. Now we are going to ask Glenda, how do you describe your work with public and private institutions and other foundations looking for a more inclusive tourism? Thank you, Jesus. That's a great question. We describe this work as something that nurtures us, that provides improvement uh, possibilities for the different initiatives that we are implementing. For us, inclusion has a very important uh, pillar in the association with others, and that is to offer for the good, for the benefit of all the different skills, abilities that we have in order to co-build the reality that we dream of. Also, it has allowed us to have an effect on public policies. This has also reduced the gaps, and also it has strengthened the uh, equality. Also, this experience in the different uh, associations between private and public and fund, uh, institutions and foundations, this has allowed us to develop ourselves. Uh, we have grown together and that's why we have the different experiences with Cernatur, with the National uh, Forest Corporation, with different uh, entities from the area from the area. And also, I can mention the Escuela Especial de Desarrollo La Reina, also the Mawida Park. So in general terms, we can say that this possibility of co-building through these associations is good for the organizations and for the society. Today, we want to highlight the signing of a new covenant with this uh, astronomy institution because we can organize night shifts and night visits and to learn more of this. No doubt there are a lot of things to do, but we are sure that we can do it in an easier way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Glenda, for your answer. Now we are going to uh, start working with Renat. I would like to ask you if there are any plans of expansion of Glow for All in other regions uh, such as uh, Latin America, maybe you can do it in an autonomous way or you can create these um, associations with other institutions. Thank you for the question. Uh, you know, then I was a child, I remember the time and um, I was looking uh, at the globe and maps and dreaming about travel, and nothing could stop me. Uh, and I really believe that uh, nothing should stop people who dream of uh, new adventures and travels, uh, especially a disability and unaccessible environment. Uh, as I said earlier, um, our goal is to provide um, a freedom of choice for tourists with disabilities. So everyone could travel anywhere. And um, of course, we plan to open um, 
Of course, we plan to open many new, as many new countries as we can. Uh, and of course, we plan to go to uh, Latin America. Uh, and our tourists have experience in um, uh, this region. For example, they visited Mexico, Brazil, uh, Dominican Republic, um, and we are looking for new partners in this region because they are a marketplace and um, our uh, one of our social impact is um, uh, make more visible uh, these projects who are thinking about um, accessible tourism and accessible adventures for all people. Um, we know some uh, great initiatives and we know more interesting and great initiative after the, after this um, wonderful event and we hope to we hope to find new partners and open for uh, our tourist uh, tourists Latin America thank you for the question thank you for your, yeah. thank you for the opportunity perfect uh, thank you thank you very much y ahora nos vamos And now we are going to ask Bastien about this very interesting project, Latin America for All. I want to ask you, because this project is based or focused in uh, accessibility for people with disability, uh, have you ever thought about expanding your project to people with visual uh, disability, with cognitive disability, and do something more like a universal project? Yes, Jesus, as you saw in the presentation, one of the learned lessons is that working with only with people with a physical disability is a very small niche. So, and it's been difficult to understand the financial sustainability, especially in these pandemic years. It has hit us um, very strongly as it hit all the tourist um, area. And in this new mission, in this new strategy that we have considered, we want to consider other types of disabilities. We have already had a um, beginning or at uh, this uh, process with Novidentis, uh, which is a uh, people who are blind, and this was at the beginning of 2020, and we had a tour of three weeks long in Ecuador, and it was a very successful tour. We had very good reviews. And we want to continue with this type of tours and also including the other disabilities that you mentioned. Thank you so much, Bastien, for this. I'm very happy that you are extending this project to other types of disabilities. As I mentioned before, congratulations to all of us, to all of you. Thank you for this. We've seen great projects based in Latin America, uh, World World. It's a global uh, project. Globe for All, it's also a very, very, uh, it's a global project. And we will continue with these uh, projects with a social impact solving real problems, uh, problems that have not been solved through the um, initiatives of people with or without dis uh, disabilities in order to have a better world and enjoy the outdoors, the enjoy tourism in a very, in an accessible way with the same uh, conditions or and circumstances for the citizens. I started working with the accessibility for natural environments in the 1990s. We started working with this in Spain in the 1990s and my PhD thesis was a methodological proposal to analyze the accessibility of protected natural areas. And this is, I'm so proud of that. We are going to finish here our panel. We want to thank all of those who participated in these uh, sessions, in this great uh, panel. And we want to thank all the speakers uh, because you shared your experiences with all of us. And thank you, Zero Project, for organizing this session. Thank you so much.